I feel City's performances, as in the level of how well they played, ended when they played Real Madrid. You know, mm. of how spectacular and brilliant they can be. You know, if you take the games after that, uh, Brighton, Brentford, you know, Man United in the cup final, well, it wasn't the greatest game again, got over the line. Mm. Last night was the same. And that can happen at the end of a season. You've been terrific for, you know, for months they were brilliant, City. Uh, but their performance levels ended against Real Madrid when they beat them 4-0 at home. It's interesting you say that because Pep Guardiola yesterday was saying after that victory over Inter Milan that uh, over the course of the season their performances haven't been brilliant. Uh, mm. You know, they haven't... Because even we talked about it at the start of the season that they weren't losing games but they weren't necessarily uh, putting in these incredible performances that we might expect from them. Again, they were just... It was just more of a case of winning games and winning them, not ugly, but just winning them. Nothing more to it, really. Um, and he was saying last night that, you know, Arsenal have been exceptional this season, but we've just we've just got it over the line, essentially. We've just been able to, to do enough to win the Premier League, to win the FA Cup, and now to have won the Champions League as well. Mm. Um, and I, I suppose you can forgive it as well, because... Coming into a game like that last night, the pressure was so on Man City because everyone was expecting yeah. them to win it. So we might it's possible that players would be a little bit more cautious, a little bit more cagey in how they approach these things just because of the magnitude of the game. Yeah, and you, I think we also have to applaud how unique this City team is because it isn't built on Harlem Globetrotters' brilliance of incredible football week in, week out. Mm -hmm. We do get served it sometimes and we've mm -hmm. watched some brilliant performances. Yeah. But there is an element to them. They can be dogged. They can be gritty. They can be everything a great team has. Yeah. You know, if they need to. If you need to resort to, we'll battle with you and we'll stand up and match you. You know, if you think of the best players for City last night, Ruben Diaz, absolute colossus at the back. Mm -hmm. Rodri midfield. Edison in goal. You know, them three. John Stones in there as well. You can throw them. They're physically the bigger parts of their team. Look, not one forward in either team played really well last night. If you think of their forward line, and Dzeko, done okay, battled away. Martinez, again, likewise, found it difficult. But then look at the City forward line. None of them shone, and yet they have all season. And that, to me, well, we didn't need you tonight. And yes, you battled and you run your socks off for the team. I thought that that is an exceptional side. When teams can do that, when I played against United, Manchester United at their best, and Liverpool included... When you played against them, you knew that it was a tin at job at times, and you also knew they could match you physically. So you couldn't beat them up mm. physically and think, "Oh, we'll just impose our our game style, our plan, and just we're all over them." Well, they could they could match you, and that's what City did last night. They matched what Inter Milan did. Uh, and Pep Guardiola also alluded to the fact that first half in particular was quite anxious. He said yeah. he, he said he could sense that with his with his team, and in the end, they had to be essentially lucky as well to win that game uh, because he also said this is a kind of final, this is a competition that can be decided, as he said, by a coin, for example, yeah, a coin yeah. flip. And um, the goal obviously came in the 68th minute from Rodri. It was a mm. super goal, wasn't cool. it, Kath? Well, he's used the, the body, you know. He's used the body of a, a opposing defender. I think it's Darmian yeah. to get it round, you know, and that in itself. And he's been... You know, when Fernandinho retired, a lot of people weren't quite sure if Rodri could step in and do the things that he'd done for mm. years and years for City. And he's, he's, I think he's improved probably as much as any City player under Pep, the way he plays. But he's also his ability. He sees that moment and he doesn't get flustered by it. Mm. He just picks his spot and thinks, I forget it on target, I get it in... You know, he sees that m small space to hit, yeah. hit it in, and he does. Look, I mean, it was great play by Akanji, and then obviously Bernardo Silva. It, they get a little bit fortunate with a bounce, but he's onto it in, in a flash. We'll talk more about Rodri's performance, no doubt, a little bit later on. What I also liked, actually, with regards to Rodri, and even Jack Grealish in their post-match interviews, is both said, we didn't play well. Neither of them were, you know when they were first interviewed neither were just celebrating the moment they were both quite humble enough to say you know I, di I didn't do that well out there on the pitch but my teammates helped me or yeah. helped us to get to, to this victory and I thought that was quite nice showing that sort of humble side of these players because it was some of those interviews were wonderfully raw and emotional and Jack Grealish couldn't chat couldn't speak sorry for the first mm. few minutes he was sort of you could just see that the sort of 
delight, but as I say, the sort of shock as well of what they've all achieved, something that, you know, has been long, long coming for, for Manchester City. It's, can I just add that? It's a really big one. I was thinking of this last night as the game went on when Kevin De Bruyne came off injured. I was thinking Real Madrid, Liverpool, Mo Salah coming off injured early yes. in the game. Yes. Okay. Now, in them moments, you've lost your talisman. Mm. You know, let's let's remember that's what Salah was to Liverpool as well. Mm-hmm. You know, you've lost your talisman. He he's your guy that just can create something in a moment, and you've lost him, and you've still found a way to win. Mm. You know, and there you are not going to all be at your brilliant best as long as some of the team are, and others are just doing. They're working their socks off. There's two great pictures: one the Daily, uh, Daily uh, Telegraph, and one the Sunday Times. They're nearly the exact picture but they're slightly about a second apart mm. now and if you look it's at the celebration them, of and, Rodri and the gone. one that got me is Harlan's reaction in the Sunday Telegraph where it, you just it's it just he's got the better of him you know and when you're in their moments of incredible euphoria and someone's done something it doesn't really matter who's played well who's not I mean, I'm laughing, me and you were laughing off air now about the ratings of players in yeah. in this game. And I sort of sometimes think, why do we need to do ratings on the biggest games? Why do we need to do them? I you don't know, know why we need them at all, really, anymore. <laughs> um, Some of them get them a bit off the wall. But, yes. you know, it's 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 weird how we, we look upon a great victory and let just remind ourselves how good they've been in previous games to get to this final and sure. they've got over the line. Just to paint the picture of this this particular image that you're referring yes. to. Obviously, Rodri is, is at the forefront of it, running, celebrating his goal. We've got Jack Grealish there as well, who is just <laughs> mouth open and just delighted of, of what they've achieved. And you say Harlan there. Uh, he's a bit blurry in this picture, but you can clearly see he's looking up towards the sky and obviously just enjoying this raw excitement of we've just gone ahead in a game that's been difficult for Manchester City. Um, there were chances as well, let's not forget, late on for Inter Milan. Yes. You know, Lukaku uh, with a header that was straight at Edison, uh, whose leg was able to deflect it away. Yeah. Um, some might say Lukaku should have buried it, but not an easy effort or...? Well, I look, I give him the slight benefit of the doubt. It, it's, it hits Edison on the leg. Mm. And, and and I think he's done. He's from a standing position. It comes to him very quickly, and he's just tried to guide it. Nine times out of ten, people would just say, you know, the old-fashioned phrase would be, just get it on target, you score. Yeah. He's got it on target, yeah. and he's hit his leg. It reminded me of Belgium versus Croatia in the World Cup, yes. where Lukaku had a couple of golden chances against Croatia. That's right. And he gets caught a bit flat-footed. Uh, he had a header, he gets caught flat-footed on a side-footed chance. And last night, that was the chance of... It was like that World Cup. Mm. He's had a year that it's just not happened for him, hasn't it? You know, mm. in, in front of goal. And he was causing problems to City, he, he, you know, when he came on. Yeah. But, he, you know, I, I felt a little bit for him because I've been there myself where you just... It falls to you and you've just got a split second to make a decision. You think you make contact, it's going to be a goal. And that's it. Edison ends up getting his leg to it. Yeah. You mentioned the World Cup. Um, Julian Alvarez made a little bit of history yesterday, becoming the first player ever to win a treble of the European Cup, League and Domestic Cup, as well as the World Cup in the same season. No other player has ever done that. Wow. Which is quite some feat for just 23 years old. (laughs) It's like, yeah, I've accomplished everything. Done it, mate. I don't need to do much more. But yeah, that's pretty impressive nonetheless. 